In this video, we're going to talk about lipids. Lipids are the very efficient way of storage of storing energy. As you can see here, lipids are formed of a fatty acid chain. In this case, we have three fatty acid chains and a glycerol molecule. This fatty acid chains has have multiple CH bonds that we talked in the previous video hold much of the energy. So these are very energy rich molecules. Now lipids can be either saturated as this one's here. They're saturated because every possible bond of carbon is saturated with a hydrogen or another carbon. They can also be unsaturated and that is when there are bonds that could be saturated with hydrogens and they're not and this results in a double bond between carbons so, so for example here we have an unsaturated fatty acid which has a double bond between these two carbons and here we have a polyunsaturated fatty acid and here we have two double bonds between the carbons and this is important because this changes, changes the structure of the lipid when the lipid is completely saturated the chains are pretty linear, as you can see in this case. They're very stiff, and this helps the molecules stack up on each other. So this makes, makes it less flexible or less fluid. On the other hand, when you have double bonds, these double bonds add kinks to the fatty acid chain, and they result in a more fluid and less compact molecules. So for example, saturated fats will tend to be more solid, such as butter, compared to unsaturated fats, such as oils, that are more fluid. And this will be very important when we look at the structure of the cell membrane, because cell membranes can regulate the fluidity of the membrane by adding more unsaturated bonds, this will make it more fluid, or taking out or saturating their bonds to make them more rigid. And this is a way to adapt to temperature. When you have warmer temperatures, you don't need to have a very fluid membrane because the temperature is already making things more fluid. So you will tend to have more saturated fatty acids in the mem cell membrane. When you have colder temperatures, you want things are getting colder or getting stiffer. You want to add fluid to the membranes and you do this by adding unsaturated bonds or double bonds between the carbons. And lipids can come in a diversity of forms, not just fatty acids, but they, you can have free fatty acids with just a single chain of fatty acid. You can have structures such as cholesterol, in which case is um, so we call it steroid. They're um, very different structure from a triglyceride or a phospholipid. Now going to the difference between saturation and unsaturated fats. An unsaturated fat can be a trans fat. And in this case, the unsaturated fat, even though it has a double bond, the film model, as you can see here, is very linear. So it makes it behave almost as a saturated fat, even though it's unsaturated. And these trans fats are are not very common in nature and are actually mostly produced by overheating, for example, high, um, vegetable oils. This is an image I pulled from Wikipedia for, for this slide. They can be trans, trans fats, and you, you heard of this very famous, these are the ones that actually behave in this way, that they stack up linearly, or they can be cis -satur uh, saturated fats, and in this case, there is a kink, so you can see that it's not a linear, it's not a linear molecule, so it's this type of molecule will behave more as you would expect for an unsaturated fat. And this is for comparison of fully saturated fat. So you can see that even though the trans fat is unsaturated, it has a double bond, it still looks very much, the structure is very much like that of a saturated fat, and that, that is part of, of why these trans fats are are a, are a problem and not while well, unsaturated fats can actually be okay depending on, on the way that they are. 
Now let's look at this very important lipid, which is the component of the cellular membrane. So it's the phospholipids. And they're called phospholipids because they have a lipid component, which is just in the bottom. Is the, they are the fatty acid chain. And acid, uh, lipids, as we know, they are nonpolar, which means they don't interact with water. They are hydrophobic. Phospholipids, on the other hand, are highly charged molecules. This is phosphate. It's a highly charged molecule that makes it hydrophilic. It, it's polar. It wants to interact with water. So this means that the polar area of the phospholipid is going to head towards the water, while the tails are going to try to hide each other from the water. They want to interact just with other tails and not with water. So let's see these tails that we've been calling, they're fatty acid chains, and they are attached by a glycerol, and then the glycerol attaches them to a phosphate, and some have a choline group as well. And this is the structure of the phospholipid. So what we see is in this part, we have a very polar, highly charged molecule. You can see the phosphate has all these oxygens, and oxygens that we've been talking is a very negative molecule. It's a it attracts electrons. So this makes this part of the phospholipid highly polar, highly charged, and therefore very water-loving or hydrophilic. This other part is composed of just long chains of carbon and hydrogen, and they are not very charged, and they are, um, as the name says, they're lipids. So these are molecules that don't want to interact with water. They are hydrophobic. And the result of this is that you spontaneously, without having to do anything, the tails will try to get together and interact with each other, and the heads will like to be on the side of the water. So this means that spontaneously you form a phospholipid bilayer. When you put phospholipids together, the heads will automatically head towards face the water while the tails would hide from each other, from the water and just face each other like like a phospholipid bilayer. When you just have a few phospholipid tails, what you find is a micelle, which is all the heads are heading are facing the water and the tails are all facing to the inside. So what you need to remember from this slide is that the phospholipid bilayer is actually formed spontaneously by simply the interaction of the hydrophobic areas in the phospholipid, the hydrophobic tails just wanting to hide from the water and the hydrophilic heads facing the water.